Welcome back to Analog Love Song. This is Ben, and today is Wednesday, which means we got fresh comics for you. So let's take a look and see what is in today's batch. Today we have the last of the debut issues of the Dawn of X series, Fallen Angels, number one. And we got our first number two, X-Men number two. I also picked up our Fallen Angels variant uh, to complete the series of the X-Men faces. And I had to get last week's New Mutant uh, Magic variant. All right, I'm gonna read these books, make a pot of coffee, and I'll be back with my thoughts by the magic of time travel. All right, and I'm back. And I've read Fallen Angels issue one and X-Men issue two. And I'll start with Fallen Angels issue one. It does a really good job of setting the new status quo for the rest of the Dawn of X comics. It starts with this girl on a train and you see like a little butterfly tattoo on her neck. The butterfly uh, appears to be the symbol for this comic. The butterfly is a fairly obvious symbol. It symbolizes growth. A few times in the comic they say that you are a caterpillar, you're weak and soft and ugly, and that you will become a butterfly, which uh, apparently is a stronger thing. So we see the girl with the butterfly tattoo. She puts something on her head. There it is. And as it turns out, it's something called overdrive, and we'll dive into that a little bit later in the issue. And then we catch up with Psylocke, who is no longer two people, but she is now the original Psylocke. And there's the butterfly. That kind of is the symbol of the book. As she's sitting there meditating, she gets a message from some stranger. And the message says that your enemy is Aproth and you should find this person. So then she goes to find Magneto, who is in charge after the events of the last issue of X-Force, where Professor X dies. And he basically forbids her from leaving the island, but he gives her a wink and is like, you know, go visit uh, Mr. Sinister and he might have some advice for you. And he tells her to find, basically put together a team. Then we cut to a scene where Psylocke is, she's meditating. It's like she's being trained by her sensei. And on the next page, we go to a bonfire and Laura, uh, X-23, and Young Cable are having a conversation. And after that, Psylocke comes and recruits the two of them and says, meet me at my house. However, Nate Summers, he stays, and so it's Laura and Psylocke, and they go to Tokyo. Uh, they're meeting with some underground, uh, looks like a mafia-type people, Yakuza-type people, and they're telling her about this new drug called Overdrive. In this meeting, Psylocke has a flashback to apparently something's being taken from her. Um, it appears her husband or uh, baby's daddy has been killed and they're taking away her daughter, and her daughter is represented by the butterfly. And so it's my hypothesis that the villain who gave this butterfly tattoo to the, uh, to the suicide train driver in the beginning of the issue is Psylocke's daughter. And so, of course, there's a fight, and they defeat all the people in this meeting. And then there's a page here about Overclock. I've been calling it Overdrive. It's Overclock. And essentially, it's a form, it's a drug that uses technology and taps right into your brain. And it's cheap, and you can make it with any type of, and you can make it with technology that is easily found, so it makes it readily available and therefore dangerous. And apparently, the drug overdrive has been getting more powerful, and it's making people lose their mind. And so at the end of the issue, they go to the shed and they find five kids standing around and they're all on overdrive. And the overdrive kills them, but one kid is left and it tells her some things. And on the next page, you see another symbol of the butterfly where Psylocke cuts the butterfly's wing off with her sword. And here on this page, Psylocke and Sinister are together again, and apparently it looks like he's going to be their team lead of sorts. Psylocke says, I need a team. I'll recruit them. You keep our existence from the council. I'll bring Apoth back to you. Whatever he is, 
whatever he he can do, it's yours. And then I kill him. Psylocke has definitely been a character who's not afraid to kill. And then on the last page, Psylocke says, Laura, Nathan, find me others that we can trust. Your caterpillars, glistening and soft. I can make you butterflies. And that's the end of issue one of Fallen Angels. I gotta say, I didn't have high expectations for this issue, but I ended up really liking it, and I'm excited to see where the series goes. And so that's the last issue of the Dawn of X uh, premiere issues. And I gotta say, I liked them all. The ones I was most iffy about were Excalibur and X-Force. And I went back and re reread them, and I liked them both. And so I don't really feel like there's a weak link in any of these series. I'm going to continue to read them. I feel like the most impactful book from all of these was X Factor, which is referenced in Fallen Angels and in X-Men number two, which I'm about to review. This is X-Men issue number two. The name is Summoner, and we're, we're going to see why. It stars three Summers characters. We got the father, we got the son, and we got the daughter. And this issue picks up where the previous issue ended off, where they're all just kind of hanging out on the moon. Rachel and Nathan are there, and Cyclops comes in and says, you want to go fight some monsters? And he references the events from X-Force, where Professor X died. And apparently, a second island has appeared next to Krakoa, about 100 miles to the side of it. And Krakoa has started to move towards the island, and they want to go investigate what's going on. And this is what the island looks like. It's a big volcano. And they get there. They're doing some reconnaissance. And it looks like one of the themes that has been going through some of these X books is all the X-Men are, they're at a place that's safe. And they might start to get soft because of that. Beast talked about that in X-Force. Psylocke talked about that. That was a big theme in Fallen Angels. They can't rest on their laurels. They got to get out there and keep being soldiers and in this book you kind of see some more of that where you have this plant eating animal here it looks like a like a rhino and they talk about how you know it looks kind of weak and then this huge worm comes and eats it and so i would say the common theme for these books is a predator slash prey relationship and so what are the x-men going to be are they going to be the predators or the prey and I think a lot of the X-Men kind of feel like they're being set up to be the prey because they're in a safe place and they might get weak. And then we, after that scene, we cut to where this, uh, apparently this guy is the summoner. He's in the volcano. He's the life that they sensed when they got on the volcano. And notice the symbol on him. It's the circle with three lines. And on the next page, they talk about the different levels of summoners. You got one, two, and three, and this guy is a three summoner, level three, and he can sum summon a couple of, of these mega beasts. They keep traveling, and they come upon the summoner out there in the field. Oh, and I really like this scene next. So Nathan Summers, you know, the most diplomatic out of these three, he approaches the summoner, and he gives this person a gift. Well, the gift happens to be a thermal detonator, you know, he thought he was being nice, giving this present to this to the stranger. But of course, the stranger, the summoner, presses the button and blows himself up. But it's okay, he's still alive. So the summoner comes out. He's uh, he's a little irked off with the whole thing. So he summons his mega beasts right here. You know, nothing to play around with here. A couple of crab looking guys, a shadow guy looks really cool. But Rachel, she realizes that she's been imprinted with Krakoa in her mind. Uh, apparently all mutants have been whenever they arrive to the island. And so she uses this Krakoa implant to uh, figure out how to speak to the summoner. He explains what's going on with this island. And if you remember back to, I forget if it's the House of X or uh, Powers of Ten, but the original Krakoa Island got split in two a couple of millennia ago. Um, and, you know, it's the same story where uh, Apocalypse lost his four original horsemen. And the name of this island is Arako. Might be mispronouncing that, but we'll get there. Arako. And so 
the islands are moving back to each other because apparently they love each other. Right here, you kind of see the islands are getting closer. They reach out and they join back as one. It's pretty cool. And on this page here, you kind of see what's going on where the island has formed up there with Kirkoa. It'll be very interesting to see what results of that because this island was full of wild beasts. And then we have the end where Apocalypse approaches this summoner. And as we find out, the summoner is the offspring of one of his original horsemen, War. And at the very end, we have the embrace. And he says, I will protect you. So it's a pretty touching reunion there at the end for the island and for Apocalypse. All right, and Dawn of X has been really knocking it out of the park. These uh, are some amazing X-Men stories. We're on new territory with a lot of these stories. It'll be interesting to see where they go. And so next week we have Excalibur number two and Marauders number two. And I'm looking forward to both of those. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of the comic book review. And until next time, take it easy.